Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Open Mic Podcast. Today, I'm joined by some of my favorite musicians. We have back for his third start, Aurelio. Woo! And we have Marshall, and we have Ricky. And I'm just so glad to have you guys in the podcast studio. How's everyone feeling today? Great. Feeling really good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Good company. <laughs> yeah. Well, I uh, the reason we're here is to talk about the 419 renditions. Um, but I, I just, first of all, I think we should just sort of talk about how awesome the event was. It was so much fun, and, and I honestly can't wait for next year. Can we start off just sort of by talking a little bit about how the event was was ignited? You mean last night's event, or no? Like, like the very, the very first one. Oh, the conception of it. Yeah, um, which conceived. I just try my best not to use that word because it's oh. kind of gross. <laughs> it is. Kind of, <laughs> it's dirty. Um, actually, it was. Um, like, yeah, we did the first two four one nine renditions last year. It seems uh, long ago. Kate Westfall and I were talking about this idea like long time ago. Uh, how cool it would be to um, cover your peers' music, but at the time we were thinking like a concert, like a live show. And we kept talking about it, so then um, we did it, uh, I think in the spring of last year, and on the first 419 Renditions album has quite a few people on it, um, including Marshall and Ricky, who were uh, done all three of them. The, and so it was more of an idea between Kate and I, and then uh, the first one and second one, they weren't real public as far as inviting the community to come listen to the listening party, whereas last night it was. So I think it's really Ricky and Marshall helping out. Everyone's making it um, more of a traditional thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, maybe, Ricky, you can talk a little bit about this. Uh, it was held at the Richardson Academy building, which was super cool. It made it seem even more official. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember last year it was sort of a clusterfuck. We were <laughs> like yep. outside waiting for people to come Wait in. Waiting for me to be there. <laughs> and, and, you, <laughs> and you never showed. I didn't show. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, I mean, it, it was just super cool that, that we were able to use that building. So uh, I, I guess here's a little thank you for the Richardson Academy. Yeah. Uh, well, uh I've been uh, working as their community assistant liaison, whatever you want to call it, uh, for probably uh, a month now officially, but a little bit longer than that, um, kind of unofficially behind the scenes. And uh, I'm just trying to bring that sort of stuff in there. Uh, They're always have been wanting to do events like that in that space, but they've just never really been able to both keep the doors open to that place and be out in the community to start those things and plant those seeds and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's a, very fortunate spot that I find myself because all of these things are kind of planning themselves and I just like, oh yeah, we got a room for that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it certainly came in clutch last night because I think they were, I don't, I'm really bad at estimating numbers, but I want to say at least 25 people yeah, in I the think, room and uh, it, it was the perfect space. Yeah, I think Stephanie counted 40. What was it? Yeah, yeah there 40 were 40. The I did 40 of the programs, <laughs> so yep. <laughs> oh my gosh, so yep. double. We, we, had to gra- <laughs> we had to grab extra chairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, see, so that's awesome. I think that make, makes it the most attended one yet, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I remember last year it was literally like just the people who did it, and I know there were several people who uh, didn't make music for it to be recorded, and yeah. then um, we're still there. Yeah, I know, and la- the first year that we did it, we had a listing party at Main Street uh, Books, so Leyland hosted that, and uh, again, it was really just extended to the musicians who participated in it, and, you know, if they brought a friend or a, a family member, um, as opposed to the second one, but last night, I think it just felt more legit, it was more exciting, there were uh, about five or six musicians, it was their first time doing it, so they're excited about it, and um, I don't know, I think, and I, I think... It's probably my favorite one so far, just hearing all the, the tracks last night. Well, yeah, so before we get started, can why don't why don't one of you guys, I don't care who, because you all are sort of experts in this, talk to me a little bit about what exactly 419 Renditions is before we get carried away. All right, so what the 419 Renditions is, is, you know, there are, there's a, an arts community in Mansfield that's like budding. It's great. There's so much going on. There's so many shows. <laughs> a lot of people are making um, like original music. It's all different kinds of genres. Um, and basically, the people who are interested in doing it um, let us know. We create a list, and each act is matched up with another act. And the purpose is to take a recorded track 
from the band that you're matched with. And um, out of their entire discography, you select one and you you cover it. It could be for whatever reason that you like. You know, maybe you just like it's it's poppy or like you think it'll be challenging to kind of do it in your own style. Um, and you produce a recorded track, um, and then they are all compiled, and uh, we debut them in a physical event in front of everybody else. So if you've done very well, you can uh, just enjoy everybody's reactions, or if you've done very poorly, you can. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, just sulk in the corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the best part is seeing uh, everyone react to hearing your songs covered. Like hearing Die Bomb pop their head to Ricky's was really <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. and Corner House. Like, oh, let's go Sam's reaction to Corner <laughs> Houses. Like, oh, we figured we'd do theirs real slow. And they're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and we also have the last two 419 renditions on albums on Bandcamp. So that we'll do that with this one too for people, you know, so they can sh- listen to the music and right. share it and that type of thing. Cool. Well, so um, I sort of I have all four of us our tracks that we did. Um, I thought we would just listen to them all and then sort of take them apart in terms of what you liked what you liked about the song, why you chose it, and then maybe just group reactions to the efforts. Does that work for you all? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Great. Let's start off with our first song being Chico's brother doing Fake Smile by Nick Careless. Unrequited love is so cliche. You're not worth my tears, just like I'm not worth your time. But I don't say it, no need to complicate your life. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. People think I'm funny. Now when I'm joking, laugh to mask the truth, softly spoken between the lines. Fake a smile, what a safe place to hide. I'm not good at having feelings, not good at dealing. I can't let them see me cry. I hit the bottle, I bottle the love inside. But I'm good at getting high. I'm good at pretending everything is fine I practice my fake smile to keep it inside Cause I don't want to ruin your night The day you call me crying about whoever he is From wherever you are, who knows where you've been Fake a smile, what a safe place to hide but for too long you forgive them You're posting your pictures of how happy you are Your thoughts of me soon fade But my thoughts of you remain But I'm good at getting high I'm good at pretending everything is fine I practice my fake smile to keep it inside Cause I don't want to ruin your night First of all, I think it's, it, I think that it's really cool that we were able to sort of take someone else's song and recreate it in in your own personal style. I think that's super cool because it's unique to 
to indiv- each individual song is going to sound different, but but just tell me a little bit more about what made you choose Fake Smile. I think it did choose me. Um, I know a lot of Nick Careless's music, um, and well, it's pretty bad because when I was thinking about what song I could cover, knowing that the listening party would be public, I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> I gotta be careful because you know Nick's music. <laughs> you know he has a lot of uh, sexual humor and self-deprecation, but um, but it's all heartfelt and. Um, that one I liked a lot. I identified it, you know, like a, a fake smile in it. Um, his song, the lyrics were really good. I, actually, he, he had a lot more lyrics than that that I cut out. It's about unrequited love, and um, so I don't know. It was real, real, real catchy, but it was it was a toss up between that one and another one. But um, and since Nick doesn't, you know, he moved away. I sent him the track, and he liked it a lot. So you know, I was like, "What do you think about it?" And so he thought it was a. Um, the song didn't have a bridge, so I created one for. And I don't know. I, I think with with songs, I um, I try to focus on you know the the lyrics more. So that's probably one of the prettiest ones that he had. Do you guys have anything that you wanted to add about it? Uh, I, I do want to say I've not really heard you sing in your lower register a whole bunch, and it's very beautiful. I hope to hear more Thank of you. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's actually harder. But yeah. um, you know, um. And Rob Hurst is Tom Hurst's father. Yeah. And that was something else um, because I've always done my own music, um, which explains why the quality isn't the best. <laughs> I, I do what I ha- I can with audacity, and it's always kind of worked for me. But um, in this case, um, you know, him and I talked about, hey, would you, you know, help me out here? And um, and it's really nerve-wracking, what you probably know, like to record with someone in the room. When you're by yourself, you can screw up or you're more comfortable. And it was a few takes, and... um. So uh, shout out to Rob for that, but yeah, and some of the harmonies had a lot of the lower mm-hmm. um, stuff going on. But well, I, I had harmonies in mind too, and I just think that it's really cool that it was a listening party where you're pl- you're using a, a MP3 or, or a record as opposed to having to play it live because you're able to sort of have more fun with it and play around with the song. <laughs> use you can mm-hmm. you know use har- harmonies, you can use um, effects and stuff like that. You can use fake cellos and all sorts of stuff. But it st- sounds real, so. It does sound real. <laughs> no, one, no one knew until I just said. <laughs> but the, uh, I don't know, the, the arrangement on that track too. Like, yeah, I'm getting like, uh, what's that, that song, the uh, It's My Party and I'll Cry If I Want To. I oh. get those vibes like <laughs> really? super yeah. hard off of that track. Really? Well, I didn't know about that. Plus that chorus just slaps. Like, yeah, you- Nick really like, <laughs> oh. It's poignant. It's yeah. Like, mm. Nick has a singing style. It's real syncopated. Like, I had to actually take words out of sentences because I don't sing like that. It, mm. He sounds a little like, um, even my niece mentioned, Anthony Keat is from the Chili Peppers. And it's kind of a singing rap style, and I don't do that. So it was a mouthful. Um, but I tried to do the best I could with it. But I did have to take, like, words out. I changed words from, I think he had one phrase that said something like, uh, it stayed, and I said remains. Just little things like that that was easy for me to um, to sing. So cool. You guys want to hear uh, Hurricane Ditka's algebra from Autopoxy? Let's do it. Yes, Let's do it. Right. They loved it too.
Super cool, man. Hello. Uh, tell me a little nice. bit about, uh, obviously, Algebra is a pretty famous song by Autopoxy. Yeah, they uh, they made a really cool uh, music video yes, that like did. involved people. I think you were in that, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were sitting around in, uh, in Ricky's room when it like came out. We were watching it on YouTube. Like have running it through his speakers and everything. And Watch the video as your yeah. Well, or the song. Just the whole like, I don't know. They really nailed the promotion for that. From like beginning of like Absolutely. single release to like. Oh yeah. Oh man. You know, I I'm credited as being in the music video. I remember it, it was even though I'm totally not in the music yeah. video <laughs> <laughs> because it was a wait. It was like a long like a wait for the video to happen. So you had to leave. Yeah, because I was I was on call that day and I don't remember what happened, but something happened, and. Um, I was. I told Leah. I was like, "Hey, man, I'm really sorry, but I got to leave." And it was a whole day of record of that video. Then when the the release came out on Facebook, I was tagged in it, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, cool! Like, really cool of them to have included the music reporter. Like, I wonder if they like want some sort of like write up about this. I'm not even sure if I can do this." And then I watched it all the way to the end. And I see that my name is on there. And so then I watch it like two or three times, just like seeing if I'm in it. Totally not in it. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, Lee. You, you were there in spirit. I, w- were, I still am. Yeah. You were there a while, <laughs> yeah. too. I remember. Oh, I was there for a good two hours. On the bike hours. trail waiting yeah. to come out. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was in the, uh, what's it called? The cattle call mm-hmm. line. <laughs> what was what were you going to do in it? What was um, like? Uh, I think that I was a businessman, and I think that I was just supposed to... Uh, Walk around. I did not have as cool of a part as Aurelio. No, they would have had. I think they would have had you come out because everyone was coming out one by one on the bike trail and right. and, be, and had different props. And I think you were would have been like right after uh, me and a few other people. Yeah, I think um, I was next to Kate, or I was behind Kate Westfall because she was on buckets walking. Yes, yes. <laughs> Although I still believe that Alex, the the bass guitarist, has the best role of the blind person, or is oh, it his brother? Yeah. That's his brother. That yes, was, uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, his brother. Yeah. He's just walking around blindly with a with a. I mean, maybe it's really offensive to the blind community, but it's a good thing they're not actually going to get to see it. Uh, oh God! <laughs> it, it wasn't until you said that. But, uh. Maggie's face. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so you 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 like? <laughs> I'm I'm going to hell. So you like that song enough to choose it? Well, okay. If anything, like. Uh, because it's so well known, like that was a reason not to choose it. Because we're like, oh, what if this turns out really crappy? So sure. like, we had to weigh our options. Um, and we had a couple other picked out, others picked out. Um, <laughs> uh, Lee's, I don't know if it's girlfriend. I don't know, but she was very at Mansfield Music Fest. Was very uh, trying to convince us to do a different one. She was a little drunk, you know, whatever. But <laughs> Wait, she had, who was sorry? Uh, Lee's, uh, Lee's girlfriend. Yeah, sorry, oh, Lee. Okay. I don't know. Okay. But um, she was like, hey, I know you're thinking about doing algebra. Maybe you should do third long instead, <laughs> which was one of the ones that we were considering. Um, but when it came down to it, we were just like, we're going to go big or go home. Like somebody eventually is going to be matched with autopoxy and somebody is going to choose algebra. So we might as well to do, kick it. Ass do it. Up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's their signature at this point. Oh, yeah. Well, and then sitting down and looking at like realistically, how would we do these? Like we, we took a couple and we're like, just abstract, how would we apply what we do to what this is? And algebra just, there were so many things that just fell into place where it's just like, wow, we could do this and like like the gang vocal part. Uh, Ori in the track has like maybe a measure where it's just Ori's voice and like claps. Mm-hmm. So we we're like, okay, well, first off, we're going to extend that quite a bit. I really want to put the focus on those lyrics there. Yeah, well, if we can just interrupt for a second, I I think that that's a great part of the song because it's it's like I remember looking at the sort of it was odd because it was like uh, divided at the at the uh, four one nine redditions yesterday. It was like all of the punk people on one side <laughs> and then like me, yeah. Stephanie, all the solos. <laughs> yeah. Aurelio and Ricky on the other, and they were like banging their heads to to the acapella part, which I thought was really cool. I thought it was a very very smart choice. And I didn't even know it was you singing. At some point, I whispered to Ricky, I'm like, Who is, is that him singing? I thought it was Michael. Like, you just sounded different. Your vocals did. And I, oh, on the main part? Yeah, I didn't know it was you. Uh, I, thought, I thought you were all taking turns, like you're singing a part and then Matthew. No, that's uh, Matt. very inconsistent. There were a couple different takes there, and I was, like, treating them differently. Like, Ricky knows the saga. Like, I'm, like, <laughs> becoming more comfortable with recording my voice and hearing my voice recorded. It's not easy. It's It's really not. But then, like, there was a night where... 
Ricky was, I think Ricky was playing somewhere and I went home and I tracked for just hours, 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 just the vocals. And like it started out where I was emulating Ori, like to the point where like it would have been like a Weird Al song. Like, I don't know, like I felt like, oh crap, like he's gonna think I'm mocking him <laughs> if I just like match what he, you know, not match perfectly, match like enough to be like, wow, they're making fun of me. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it's funny you say matching because as I was listening to Adipoxy's version of Shatter, uh, I was like, that doesn't sound like Ori. That sounds mm-hmm. like Marshall. I, know, I love yeah. that we like we did that to each other. It was it was just sort of crazy because I I remember I leaned over to Stephanie and I was like, was that Ori singing? And I I still don't honestly know the answer. You guys oh. have similar voices. Yeah, it it became like very clearly revealed this time too. Yours like his is a little more clean for the most part. Yours is a little bit more gruff, but it's like the same starter pack, and then you kind of <laughs> branched out into uh-huh. the two different worlds from there. That was really cool to see. Yeah, it was cool because you guys are like sort of very similar in, in format. Like you, you have three, me- for th- you have three. I can't speak today. This is not <laughs> oh, going well. What well, that, that three was... three bandmates and yeah. you're all playing the same instruments. So I think about the same range too, and you, you both sing and then you I, will yeah, scream here and there. It so. didn't dawn on me until Mainstream Music Fest because we were like we were very closely like all of that was the first time we were all in the same spot and like you know we'd all heard the recordings and like I don't, I don't think Shep or Maybe Mikey had seen on epoxy before, but so we're all there and we're all watching and it was like, wow, yeah, it's like we're three piece, they're three piece, same instrumentation. Or he's got like a couple things like a looper and uh, is doing like more complicated stuff on the guitar. So like right away we had to, we had to inventory. So like, what are the strengths of out epoxy, this track in particular, what are they doing and what are strengths that like what we can do and like, how do we like sidestep some of that stuff? So it's like the actual song like Al- algebra by Autopoxy has like guitar solos and like really intricate like vocal stuff and like it's it's super well polished and stuff like that so we're like okay so uh trying to emulate that probably gonna fall a little short that's fine what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some more like time-based and like uh structure-based tweaks to it and we're gonna make it fit more of our thing and with us it's like you know we very rarely use guitar pedals and delays and stuff like that so it's just like kind of distorted guitar maybe a little guitar solo at the end in the uh the fashion that Ori would maybe do it's like a modified one that he had in the actual track but for the most part we just simplified everything and just which is like characteristic of what we would do if we had (laughs) come up with the song so but the ending course was cool too like would you all singing together in the way that you did it it reminded me of your your drunk week (laughs) well yeah it was like it was like a little slice of that wait what is Drunk Week and oh, when do I get I'll to be a part of it? You. It is joyous is uh, what Drunk Week is. Is it too late to have Drunk Week this year? Oh, absolutely not. Um, okay. Basically, when I was coming up, before I moved up here, I would come up and visit Marshall and occasionally play a show in Shelby or something like that to essentially have a paid vacation or as much of a vacation as I've ever had. And we'd come up and at first, like, I didn't really drink even though I was 21. Marshall didn't really drink even though he was 21. And we didn't really know what drinking meant, but we were, we were like, oh, I'm, I, I better keep up with him because he seems like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> we're both doing that to each other. And what ended up happening is we would come up and just have a week where we'd be shit faced for the entirety of that week. Oh, my gosh. And uh, you, you could go to work because I, I think I was yeah. working at the thrift store. And somehow, <laughs> somehow I managed to wake up, go to work and like everything was fine. And then I worked like a block away, something like that. So get home from work. Whoop. Where you at, Ricky? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds so that so horrible, they're But I totally like want to be a part of yeah. them. <laughs> the only injuries so far have been um, a dropped pizza and a ruined bed sheet, and I can't say any more about that. The pizza fell on the bed. I uh, know. Oh, <laughs> two <laughs> separate incidents. The pizza was last year. <laughs> yeah, I still. Mm. All right. I'm, so no injuries. I'm then. No some injuries. Here. Just, I, I, just emotional injuries. <laughs> I, I do want to like. Ask you, I know the answer to this, but I'm asking you for the benefit of the podcast because I really oh. like the gang vocals and we've done them a number of times, but the setup this time was really interesting. So if you could, oh yeah, okay. So the setup this time, we uh, we we run Melancholy House. It's a it's a venue space. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a performance room where the band's set up and we have like treatment in there. So if you go in there, it's it's kind of like being in this room where there's not a lot like reflecting off the walls. So we had a microphone set up in that room, pointing into a room with no treatment in it. And um, this is a, a technique that I learned from Ricky because we've done it like so many times. We just 
we were drunker and um, he wasn't around, so we were probably messing something up. But I think we had like four or five people um, all placed in different spots throughout the, the untreated room, just belting it out. Ah! And uh, we did four takes. In between each take, everybody shuffles positions. And then uh, we did a couple with the uh, with the accent takes. Yeah, <laughs> those turned out very poorly. But I think that's more of a user error than um, than the actual technique being faulty. But uh, you put them together like individually. If you solo them out, they sound horrible. You know, and th- you start layering them up, and it just sounds like more and more people. And then yeah, eventually, right. it kind of just grays itself out. And the you're melancholy like, okay. house choir. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you had a f- who's you had a f- four people this time, not just your trio. Yeah, it was. Well, it was. No, we had five because Allison got in on them too. It really? Was, it was Allison, Kyle, uh, Mikey who plays bass, Matt who plays drums, and me. Wow. And then the dog was in one of them, but I cut that take because oh, her bark just totally cut through. It. Her bark cut through everything. <laughs> like you had them all turned on and everything, and you could just hear her bark clear as day. <laughs> she just wanted on the fun. She did. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. All those voices. <laughs> Her pitch, her uh, her pitch is pretty shit though. So, oh. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, I had the pleasure of covering Chico's brother two years in a row. You did, yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. this year, I decided to use your build a wall. Uh, I'm gonna see. I'm getting emotional again. <laughs> hey, that's okay. I'm a crybaby. Uh, that's okay. I got a headache after last night because I was like, you know, because I was that. Rest- is that bad? No, I was restraining, and I think I put a muscle on my neck because I didn't <laughs> want to cry in front of people and it was yeah anyway well so um, I guess since I can't really ask myself the question I'll just tell you why it was that I chose it um, you know being a reporter is, is hard I think a lot of the times because um, the typical reporter isn't supposed to choose sides they're just supposed to stay down the middle and be um, you know, just just representative of the truth and the facts. And that's really hard because I think a lot of times people forget that journalists are people too. And um, I myself have many convictions and uh, feel like I, I know right from wrong. And I like to express the fact that I know right from wrong, maybe even too much. Uh, but I don't get to do it that often, except for pretty much in music and apparently in this podcast. That's good. <laughs> and um, we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> there have actually been several occasions in which I've called Donald Trump a, a jerk. So, we'll <laughs> but uh, this this song of yours, ever since I heard it, I, I don't know how how I don't remember the first time I heard it, but but you you've you've had it for quite a while, mm-hmm. and and I've heard you sing multiple times, sing it multiple times, and each time is pretty. Pretty heartbreaking, I think, because, you know, the crux of the story is like, you know, your dad, who's a hero of yours, lived this life and he survived, you know, getting across the border from from snake pits and stuff. And and I would love to actually hear you tell tell that story again, if, if that's cool with you, because I had no idea about them until you until you brought it up. But I just think that it that it's it's such a sacrifice for people to leave their home country and come to America and and believe with all of their heart that they're making the right decision, p- potentially leaving their family, potentially never seeing them again, Huge risk. potentially risking yeah. their life. And then they get here and they've lived here for decades or forever, or maybe they've lived here, but their parents did that. And now they're they're having this man who's supposed to be the leader of the free world telling them that they're not allowed to be in this country. And for a minority, whether you're Hispanic or, or, or black, it's just ridiculous how difficult life is here. And so this was my opportunity to really try and understand what it was like to be oppressed because as a straight white man, that's something that I've luckily never really had to deal with. And... Ricky, you helped record it, so maybe you can speak to me a little bit about it. In my opinion, the most powerful part of the song or the most powerful part that I was hoping would be of the song is the part where we take several audio clips of Donald Trump's stuff Mm -hmm. and we just sort of build on it. And I wanted it to sort of be overwhelming for the ear because in in my understanding of that situation, that's, I mean, that's sort of a day in the life of being a minority, of, of having not just Donald Trump, but all of his, you know, Trump 
pets <laughs> Trump <laughs> <laughs> saying saying the same things and oh. chanting build a wall and and you know all of the different physical harm and and verbal bullying that's happening it took you on a journey I mean I mean even if if you didn't write the song I mean it, it's real sentimental melancholy and then there's rage I mean so it's like up and down <clears throat> I was I, that was like draining sitting there. <laughs> like I was going through a lot, just thinking, well, not just for myself but other people. But yeah. Well, good. I'm, I mean, I'm glad that it had that effect because that's that's really what I was hoping for. And and I I have to give a lot of credit to Ricky for a great job, Ricky. for that because I basically just sent him the voicemails or not the voicemails, the audio clips, and I was like, hey, if you want, I can swing by and build this with you. <laughs> and then he was like, here it is. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. And that I think that really caught everyone off guard in a good way. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. then the strings, I was like, ah. Oh. Right, <laughs> because it, it was so. I, it, was, it was supposed to be really beautiful and then really shitty. So was, without without yeah. further ado, here, here's the uh, build a wall. back from where we came from then the president comes along deporting you back from where you came from Donald the secretary of homeland security total working with myself the wall just got Muslims 10 feet higher in the united states until our country figure out what the hell from this day forward it's going to be only America no first. Sense of America <laughs> first. And I have a great relationship with Mexico and with Mexico. Hasha, 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 Mouth of our Russia. Hasha, 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 Mouth of our Russia. Build a wall.
I will build it. We will build it. So, yeah, I mean, that's my that's my tune. I don't really know what I had to say about it, but... I got to hear a lot. I think we talked about it a little bit yesterday, um, <clears throat> but you added some real great things that I didn't get to tell you as far as adding more lyrics in the end. You know, I remember I was like, build a wall, keep them out for all, send the spicks away, it's the American way. So you had more of a positive spin on it. And I think, like we said before, with all the snippets of Trump, you know, you, it, it's very sentimental. And then for me, it's, and not just me, a lot of people, it, you do feel a little bit of anger. I also think the way you sing it, I like the little tricks you do with your vocals. <laughs> it, like, so you, I mean, I, I think that with this rendition, all of us, did had to like tap into different ways that we you know maybe don't sing as um, frequently. I felt like you were telling a story, whereas mine was more like, "Hey, you know, this is my family," you know, and you're like, "Like, listen up, world, this is what's going on," you know. So it was from a really cool, I think, uh, standpoint too. Well, yeah, I mean, thank you. I uh, I think for the most part, I did try, and I think actually one of the things that I told you when we recorded it was like every good every good story, being a reporter, has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I really was trying to make mm. that clear. I don't know if you remember that, but oh, yeah. Yeah. with the first verse and, and w- talking about your dad and your grandpa, I really wanted that to sort of be like the beginning, and then you get down to the sort of like the bridge part where we're like, then the president comes along deporting everyone back, and and that's that's definitely sort of the middle and mm-hmm. then um and then and then even Donald Tr- the Trump quotes would would probably be still be considered part of the bridge but i really wanted to bring it home and uh i was in cincinnati the uh the day of actually that we recorded mm-hmm. uh that weekend cuz it was labor day weekend that that i was in cincinnati and then i drove back so that i could record it and i was playing it for my mom and she was like that's really great but do you think maybe instead of singing build a wall, you could just say like build a wall? And I was, I was like, because <laughs> she's actually more more anti Trump than I am, if you can believe it. Uh, but I was like, I don't know how to sing a question. Like I'm really sorry if you ha- if it, if you like, I can add a quote a question mark in the song in the yeah, song's it, lyrics. Yeah, it didn't come across as a command like you're wanting the right. wall for. You but know, purpose, um, but. but yeah, I I don't know. I w- I was really happy with how it turned out, and and I I think that it was cool to get to. I mean, we talked about this earlier with with you with the harmonies. It was cool to get to do that. Listening back to it though, it sounds very Ricky Mitchell self harmony. <laughs> I feel like which no, I'm well, not did the harmonies? Was it you both? Yeah, it was. Uh, it, he did all the harmonies there. Yeah. No, yeah. Ricky has no. I think you you're. You can tell when Ricky's produced something because it sounds perfect. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not just flattering you because I love you, my friend. I, but I mean, like, there's a lot of people who are doing music around here, and it, it's cool as far as production. And they all have their own little signature to it. You're, you, but Ricky, I think it's like wow. I mean, it sounds like completely. It is completely professional. So I think hearing you in that light is really good. Um, yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I cannot even begin to tell you how many times I'm going to quote that over the next several months. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Can he just get it on a banner? To yeah. hang up? <laughs> I want all my music produced. Take out an ad, put it in yeah. the Richland Source uh, ad, <laughs> ad slots. <laughs> well, you know, it's true. I mean, um, and it's no, it's not taken away from everyone else who's doing it. Like I said, there's everyone's great at what they do. Um, uh, I just think, you, you, you know, you can tell when Ricky's done it. Um but again, I mean, the, the, it just kept building up. I mean, uh, my uh, my niece Belisi, we talked about the renditions when we left, as we we're picking out on Chinese buffet, <laughs> and she liked that one a lot because obviously it's you know the family and stuff like that. But um, she said it was telling a story, and so so it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, I don't know the way it blossoms out, like those harmonies at the end, like the mm-hmm. the note choice just. I don't know. It, it's almost because after the after the Trump quotes and stuff, like those are, it's a little off. There's they're, they're rough waters, you know. <laughs> but like once that second vocal line comes in, like on the harmony, like it's it's almost comforting. It is, I guess. So it really adds kind of a a, a healthy kind of resolve to it. Like it almost makes you feel like, hey, you know, shit's gonna be okay. Yeah. And like it just puts you at ease. Like after kind of messing your bed up a little bit. Yeah. Well, it did have a positive vibe, I think, at the end. So. Yeah, well, I mean, unfortunately, I think there was no way to end it on a positive note with a Trump quote. But the way that it ended, 
I, I just I really loved how we ended with the like public people with people shouting or chanting build a wall because it sort of emphasizes what the song is about. Yeah. But but it it definitely was was sort of like a uh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> yeah. Um, I loved it. So. Yeah. I, well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. it. All right. So finally, last but absolutely not least, we have the Ricky Mitchell who covered Dive Bombs 88D, <laughs> which listeners looking for the original can just head back to a couple episodes ago when I interviewed Jake of uh, Dive Bomb. One, two, three, four. Another D, another dollar. school there was a Ben Folds quote that I remember reading and I can't remember what it said exactly but it essentially said if you're going to do a cover song don't make it an exact copy do your own thing and I think that if Ben Folds heard that and then heard the dive bomb original song he'd be like that was two different songs (laughs) and 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 I I just I love the breakdown the breakdown is just like the coolest part, especially when they're like doing the high parts, the shouting parts. That blue-eyed soul. I just, oh my god, man! I, I'll probably listen to this song, song as I drive home. <laughs> All of it. I mean, well, thank you. I like the, the, holding your note out as long as you did. I was like, uh oh. Like oh, I know. Yeah, that was, that was incredible too. And then the bass on the, yeah, yeah. It was all good. I mean, and then again, watching Die Bomb. And not just Die Bum, but Let's Kill Sam. Watching the, you know. In Birdscape. Well, I guess it was just Bird Bird Cage. of Birdscape, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Them all feeling it and just like laughing out of like, oh my gosh, he turned our song into this. I mean, that's a good thing to observe. Yeah, absolutely. So. so what made you pick that song of Dive Bum? Oh, uh, I should say, first of all, that it was very intimidating to do uh, one of Dive Bomb's songs because that was a name that I knew even before I moved up here from uh, talking to Marshall about the people in the scene and... Um, 
you know, I, I'd heard all the, the, the Jake Henry, Austin Moore, um, and I, I guess at the time, uh, Aaron Hill, but I'd heard all these names and they're all, you know, fantastic musicians. And so I wanted to approach it in a way that was uh, hopefully unique, but still give the, the impression that I do have a lot of respect for those guys because I do. Um, so basically the process for picking the song is I had the uh, Spotify playlist of all their stuff just on repeat for a couple of days. And uh, I found myself just kind of being drawn to this song. And so I started listening to it on repeat for a couple of days. And I started kind of drumming along on the table as it was going on. And uh, I put a mic on the table and recorded me drumming along on the table. And that was like the first rhythm track. And so for the, for the next couple of days uh <laughs> when Marshall was at work so I wouldn't you know <laughs> destroy his eardrums and sensibilities I just had a, a drumstick in my hand and I was like walking through the house and just hitting things to try to get uh a, a drum kit together that wasn't a drum kit and so all the percussion on the first half like one's uh a, like a bucket of spackling that's half empty and that's like a oh, drum wow, uh, I, I beat on my mixer for one of the tracks because it sounded kind of kind of drumish I guess the kick drum is um the box for a uh, a marching band hat uh, oh. combined with a, an old <laughs> ammo can from Glenn Surplus, and so th- there's a lot of little things like that in the beginning. And um, basically, I'm I'm a poor man's Jacob Collier. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's very uh, jazz centric. But he produced an album um, with the same feel uh, sort of thing, where it's uh, all him, and he just sits and he's like, "All right, what can I do to instrumentate this out that's not necessarily typical." And uh, I, I, I've got on him in his process and applied that to my sort of rock sensibilities and stuff like that. Uh, so it, I just tried to capture the essence of the song without capturing the uh, the instrumentation and the the, the direct feel of it. Uh, and I do also want to say that I broke my door. I was gonna I was gonna yeah. try and find a way to bring that up. Tell us a little bit about the broken door. Um, the the stomps and claps. Uh, I recorded those, um, and actually, I I wear a heart mate or a heart rate monitor, and you can see the time that I recorded that because I was running around the house like grabbing stuff, and I had to stomp on the floor a whole bunch, and like uh, there was probably fifty tracks for each the claps and fifty for the the stomps. But one of the things that I did for the stomps was just beating on the door. And uh, it just doesn't close right now. So wow. that's, that's Dive like Bomb it. would be proud. That's, that's, <laughs> we're, I'm just going to replace it with one of those bead curtains that you get at Spencer's. <laughs> bead curtain. That's right. The good news is that you're not renting it from, from a mean <laughs> landlord. That, that is very true. I remember sitting at your desk. Like, I came home one day. I'm sitting because he's got, like, a couch behind his desk. And he's telling me, like, oh, I, I want to show you this. Like, all these, this, this cacophony was the word that you used of like percussion <laughs> that was used on this track and um, so he's explaining everything that he's done and I'm looking around his room and I'm like and you were there and you were there <laughs> and you were there and I looked and like on, on his desk he's got like um, like Advil like a bottle of Advil and then it clicks in my mind I'm like that shaker in the beginning <laughs> of the song that was that bottle of Advil wasn't it and he's like yes it was he used everything. I don't know. Was, that's so cool. Like I spy. It was good to have that too because I got a pretty massive headache from all the shaking. <laughs> so. so your Diet Coke two liter could have been like a cowbell. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Could have done it. Well, that's cool. So we sort of bum rushed into the music portion, but we didn't get a chance to really talk a lot about uh, what made the four. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Made in the 419, of course, is the clothing brand that our publisher created. And I have been talking with our producer and wonderful intern Maggie, Maggie! all day about how mm-hmm. I was going to make a mess up about Made in the 419 and 419 <laughs> renditions. And there you go. <laughs> um, so uh, bands bands are given one month. And that's that's sort of beautiful and 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 awful at the same time um, because you know with more time I'm sure that that there is so many more creative choices that you could make to really make that song that you, that you're that you're covering really cool but I also think it's really cool how you only have one month so you're sort of flying by the seat mm-hmm. of your pants and you sort of are throwing all this together and it's it's almost like a like a TV show sort of thing where you have to like invent a house or create a build a house in in 
like what you get in that amount of time is all that you're gonna get and I think that's really cool it's cool I think also um with like even art exhibitions when you know that something's coming up you have something to work towards um there's pros and cons about you know having a month uh you identify musicians who are serious about it who are interested in it um and the month goes by fast. It I mean, sure does. I can't imagine, oh, yeah. especially for bands, coordinating that time if you're going to have someone record you or, you know, or just being a solo musician, I guess. Um, but it's really great because then the most unlikely pairing was probably Dime Bomb and Ricky Mitchell. I mean, when we did the live stream and picked their names out, we're all laughing because we're like, wow, this is going to be fun hearing both <laughs> of them do it. But, um, there's a lot of pressure in that too. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, it's so hard to keep a straight face while we're picking because like, yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to like impose and be like, mm, "You guys are gonna have your work cut out for you." But like, so as we're doing it for live streams, it's just like, "Die bomb and Ricky." Like, you can tell it's like holding in. We're just like, "Oh shit, what's this gonna be like?" Yeah, and it turned out well and all. But the month goes by fast, you're right. And yeah. and learn. I mean, and Ricky and Marshall can tell you from the first second one. There's well, maybe from the first one, um, there were musicians who, for whatever reason, wasn't able to commit to it at the very end, which sucked because then you're going to have a musician who isn't going to be covered, who is looking forward to hearing their song covered. So in those instances, um, someone else had to learn their songs really fast. And that, luckily, we said last night that out of the 13 musicians, only one, like kind of last minute, wasn't able to do it. So, um, But that track was covered so that that musician would have something to listen to. So that's the only thing I think is, you know, making sure everyone's going to commit to it. And I think after last night, I mean, there were people saying, when's the next one? And, you know, I think it's taken more seriously. So, Yeah, so as a plug for uh, listeners to listen to the – link on that it'll, it'll be on Bandcamp eventually yeah, right yeah. <laughs> right but 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 eventually it will be yeah. so make sure you yeah. look for it um what were what were some of your guys's favorite songs that you listened to that weren't listened to today corner house corner house is awesome corner yeah, house was dope. formerly known as the great attractor but yeah corner house they really stuck out i also liked uh let's go sam's uh version of corner house the song uh, i've always i've seen let's kill sam several times uh and i i didn't realize that uh, Gage was singing um, because they tend to have a big group of people in front of them, you know, doing the whole uh-huh. watching thing. And I am very old and very fragile, so <laughs> I don't really get into that. And uh, but that was the first time that I would been in a situation where I could really hear those vocals, and I was just amazed by He'd what that guy was voice, doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, which you know, of course, is their their purpose and everything so it's it's not that it's a bad thing on them or anything they but that's even just some harmonies in the mix there yeah like, was, what? Yeah. Go ahead, Sam. well if or you're covering Sam if you're covering Gage. corner house like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and of course ethan did a good job on all that too so it's yeah day ship studios yeah. uh well was, and that's i i love the fact that you added the producer credits to the yeah to that the was program. important yeah. yeah i think that's important uh, and this so. year too because so many th- this was the most produced uh iteration of the of yeah. renditions so far and like I don't know. It, it's great to be able to showcase, like, because I know, I know, uh, Rob's opening up a, a studio. Rob Her, Day Trip, Ricky. I mean, um, Potent Studios, which is Lee from Autopoxy. I mean, um, yeah, right. The last uh, renditions, a lot of people kind of did their own. Um, Nick Nick Hairless did his from his phone before. Now he stepped it up and produced his own instrument. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think when we did the program, we it was important to list, you know, like Noah Jones is covering this person, uh, but this person. Re- produced it i think that's because it's it's equally about them as it well, is yeah. it's, it's a shout out it's i think it's one well, moving forward even if like let's say somebody's just starting out like you if you're starting out playing music in mansfield like you probably have like some familiarity with somebody who would have been involved in this at some point so you can look at somebody who's producing and say like oh this is what they sounded like when they produced Mm -hmm. x band or something like that so if you're shopping around for somebody to like just help you out you know so you don't have to tackle the hill of like having to learn to record from scratch which is like a huge hurdle if you're starting out like just to have tracks up for people to like listen to and stuff like i think it in the whole it'll help like people in the community kind of see like what's actually there like what Mansfield has to offer as far as like studios and producers and stuff. 
it was a way to shamelessly promote those people too, as you should, because I mean, I mean, be vocal by local, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you're a musician and you can hear these different styles of recording and you can you can decide, hey, do I, maybe I want to have Ricky or maybe I want Day Trip or Potent. So you have options and it's, um, I think that's good to, um, that people know those people are producing great music in our, in our town, in our city. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I, all for it. I thought it was it was a really cool thing that that was hap- that, ha- dude. <laughs> that I, t- was... I, t- I do think it was neat. <laughs> Good God, thank you. But I am just. I think I just need to take a nap. <laughs> but I gotta say, I I really love Luke um, Adkins version. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was that was oh, gonna yeah. be mine. I Jillian. think the coolest oh, thing wow. about hearing cover songs like that is that sometimes you hear new words or new lines or or new lines stick out to you. And certainly, mm. I've only heard that song by Jillian um, a few times live and uh-huh. so I've never really gotten to sort of like delve deep into it but listening to Luke's version of it there were there were some really beautifully written words in there oh yeah, yeah. well in the in the, the chorus too like on, on that song in particular I think like Jillian has a beautiful chorus and like mm-hmm. with the rise and the chord like there's a chord change that just it, oh, it just paints this beautiful little like uh, picture and mm-hmm. You know, it, it, in seeing that Luke was covering that song, I was like, of all things, I hope that feeling, like that rise in that chorus, like remains intact. And he did an excellent job of like working, like keeping that intact, but still doing it in, in like his style and everything. It was just masterfully done. It was yeah. so good. Yeah. Oh my God. He's a great, he's a great musician. And I, I can't wait for him to have a stronger presence in the music community because I think um, he's just sort of been a little shy or or yeah I haven't met him he's, he's super talented and he seems yeah. so humble and I think being humble and talented goes a long way well I don't think he knows this yet but I'm going to really try and get him to be it an after hours performance oh, he would so. oh yeah that'd be that'd great be cool. so we'll uh, Jillian's I love I mean it was hard for me to pick a favorite I mean uh, I loved everyone's um, who else was I, I don't think Jillian can sing anything that doesn't make me just no. like instantly fall into a puddle of emotion. Right. No, no seriously. She's, she's so good at that. Yeah. Well, like, I, so I have heard, I can't miss it, called, it's Helen or what was the song that she performed? Oh, um. Uh, Lil Harlan. Lil yes, Harlan. Lil Harlan. And I've, I've heard I that. It's Lil Harlan, not Lil Harlan. Sorry. L- no. Lil Harlan. <laughs> <laughs> no, Harlan. I've heard, I've heard <laughs> Lil Harlan before uh, on, on Luke's album back when I was writing a story about him and I really really liked it so I was really pumped that like I was getting to hear a song that I was familiar with mm-hmm. and she did a great job with it she did really well sure. I haven't heard his version yet so oh it's awesome it's um, really great it was nice to have a, you know just piano that's her signature mm-hmm. you know but uh, they were all really good I mean this is probably my favorite round of rendition so far again because everyone was serious and excited and you know yeah um, everyone brought their A game yeah well, I think that like to close it off, I would just I just wanted to add that I think this is something that's super cool that I doubt very many communities or cities do. Certainly, they didn't do this that I knew of in St. Louis, and certainly someone else said that. I, d- I guess we didn't think it was that like you know original, but it's, wow, it's kind of cool hearing that no one else does that as much, you know, or as frequently. Well, so. I mean, I'm sure that someone else in this universe does it, but not but, the way that we all do. But yeah, <laughs> I just I just think that this is a super cool thing yeah. and. I think that it really says a lot about the support that local musicians have for other local musicians. And I think that that's just really cool. Yeah, yeah. we do. I want to thank you guys for stopping in today and enjoy the rest of your, your evenings. And thank you for listening. See ya. See, See ya. ya. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
summer sun when our love had just begun it's a miracle cause I found the one you and me can always find our fun Another night alone in your sheets.